Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Taylor Tuesday. Uh, Mike King here. And uh, as you're used to seeing me with with my uh, faithful minion, Ira. <clears throat> so, Ira, if you're watching, you're my minion now. Um, but anyway, uh, you're used to seeing Ira and I do this. But tonight I'm, I'm blessed to have uh, Ashley Watkins with us from our team at Taylor. And we're thrilled to have you here. Um, we are super excited. We're giving Ira the night off for good behavior or bad behavior, whichever the case may be. But I was off tonight, so um, good for him. He hasn't taken a break in a year from this. But anyway, we're excited to have you all here. Um, the really exciting presentation about something that is just such a super hot topic right now. Um, you don't have to be in the IT world to realize the, the risks of everything from identity fraud to to um, just anything being taken from your information or your systems. And, and I think you're going to be absolutely enthralled with what you hear tonight. So. We are very excited to have the team from C3, which we'll, we'll talk about in just a moment here, too. So um, I want to talk really briefly uh, about Taylor itself. As, as those of you who are active members, we, we thank you again. Uh, it was very exciting for those of you uh, as well. For It's been rebate time, which is exciting, too. So everybody gets a little money in the mail. For those of you who are shareholders, you got a little extra dividend. It's an uh, exciting time of year. And so Taylor is doing really great, and it's all thanks to you. We appreciate it. Um, as you know, you can go on here and take a look at the webinars anytime you want to. You can click on the little buttons here that the team has highlighted and click on webinars and take a look at those. I've actually gone back and looked at a couple of the past ones, and I'm certain that I'm going to share this one with uh, all the team members here at Upper Line Care in uh, Nashville. But um, it's exciting, so make sure you take a look. Go to the Taylor Medical website, and uh, you can look at any of the webinars you want to do, especially review this one. So. Let me give you the, the commercial I'd always give is that if you haven't sent your information in to Ashley, Siobhan, Carla, and team, um, take the time to do so. Um, those of you who got the rebates got good, nice rebates this year. And why is that? Because you used the products that were so heavily discounted uh, that you were able to be rewarded for that. And uh, we're the largest GPO in podiatry in the country at this point, And we're excited about that. So if you haven't taken the time to do that, uh, you know, take some time, take a look at your supplies, look at your vendors, your SKUs, your supply amounts that you order, the manufacturers you get them from, you know, what size to get 30, 30 mil, mil bottles, say, of dexamethasone versus a five or six or whatever. Put that all in Excel sheet if you can. If you can only do it in Word, fine. I know that the team at Taylor will figure that out. Uh, but if you can get an Excel sheet and send it over, you will very quickly uh, get an enabled document that shows you how much money you're going to save by being a member of Taylor. Um, so, you know, please participate. So I want to go back here for just one second, and then I'm going to let these guys go. So we're really, really lucky tonight to have two members of um, a uh, super cybersecurity team. Um, I mentioned to them earlier that I was fortunate enough this week to meet the CEO, uh, Mr. Tony Sanchez, who was just a gem of a person. Uh, I got to have a walk with and along the docks in Newport Beach, and we had a great conversation about uh, what this company can do. And uh, we're blessed today and so thankful to have uh, Eric Torres, who's the Director of Channel Development and Datto Incorporated, and also Davis Tron, uh, the Director of Operations for C3 Tech. And uh, those of you who practice in Orange County probably know Davis very well. He's been running through the clinics uh, down around Santa Ana and Newport Beach and Orange, et cetera. So I'm sure you're familiar with them. But um, Anything, uh, Ashley, you want to add before we jump ahead, or will let's let the boys kind of take the show? Yeah, I'm going to let them take it. And uh, just to let everybody know, as per usual, we will do some questions um, at the end. So feel free to put your questions in the chat box. Davis, Eric, it's on to you guys. We're gonna, we'll shut down and disappear for a while. Let you do your thing. Ready to rock. All right. Well, hello. Um, thanks everyone for attending today's afternoon webinar, uh, late afternoon. Uh, we got some very exciting tips on protecting against cybercrime today. Um, C3 Tech, actually, let me go to the next slide. There you go. Uh, C3 Tech, we're an IT-based company in Southern California. We provide services like copiers, printers, voice over IP, help desk solutions, and more recently, um, helping the mobile workforce situated in the work from home environment. Um, with more and more threats living virtually like us in the forms of email, software, and lack of security configurations, we had to find the best in class solution to serve our clients. And that's why we vetted out Datto, our um, IT MSP business services provider. 
As a platinum service provider for Datto, I'm excited to introduce our partner today and give you more insights on cybercrime, the healthcare industry. And please be sure to stick out towards the end. We do have some promotions, some Amazon gift cards and free hardware up to $3,000. Eric, up to you. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you all for joining us today and thank you for that warm introduction. I'm Eric, uh, Director of Channel Development here at Datto. And uh, usually I'm out on the road meeting with people, giving industry event presentations, meeting with business owners, meeting with practices and, and healthcare organizations, finding out what's what you're doing to make sure that your data and your customers, your clients are safe and what's keeping you up at night and what we can do to help. Real quick about Datto ourselves, uh, we are the world's leading provider of business continuity solutions, meaning backup solutions. We make sure that if anything happened to your practice, at a, at a moment's notice, we can bring you right back up and running. We are a global company. We are headquartered just outside of New York City, but data centers and offices all over the world with over 700,000 small and medium-sized businesses under the umbrella of Datto. And rest assured that all of the data within these borders stays within these borders. We have two data centers, bi, bi coastal data centers, so your data never leaves the US borders. So today we're talking all about the cyber threats and specifically how they affect you, the, the healthcare providers that are out there. And there is no shortage of these stories. And I'm sure all of you tuning in right now have heard these stories, uh, even, even as, as early as a few weeks ago. Here's uh, an attack that happened on, a, on an allergy clinic. And this one resulted in a king's ransom of, of an ass. This was one of the largest uh, ransom ass that I have ever seen personally. And I'm constantly reading these stories. But these guys that did this, they took a very targeted approach. They knew exactly who they were affecting. And they knew their backup process. They knew that, that they were vulnerable. And they knew that they had, so they asked for one of the largest ransom asks I've ever seen, 1.75 million. And the reason that they attacked them and the reason they could ask for such a large dollar amount is because the, the data that you have as a healthcare provider is extremely valuable on the dark web. Not so much for the, the data itself, that is valuable in itself, but the fact that it's healthcare data and what that means for uh, for the healthcare provider, if word gets out that it was ransomed, that it is out there in the dark web, and then the next steps that have to happen as a result. So let's take a step back and let's let's truly look at ransomware because I still meet a lot of people out there that say it's not going to happen in my practice. My my clinic is is not on their radar, and the fact of the matter is everybody's on their radar. Every single organization, every single healthcare practice, it doesn't matter what you do, these guys are casting such a wide net because it is working. Now, I don't wanna bore you with a ton of stats and us at Datto, we have a number of different surveys that we use and, and we're constantly keeping our, our, our ear to the pavement and, and seeing what's out there. The last stat that, that I want you to pay attention to is the one all the way at the bottom down here. A business is hit with ransomware every 13 seconds, any kind of business. Those are healthcare practices and, and uh, it doesn't matter the, the vertical that of, of a, a business you're in, that's how often this is happening. And they're taking an increasing look at healthcare specifically. And that's where we need to get better at what we're doing. There are There is no shortage of these stories. Just in preparation for this, I was able to pull up all of these headlines that came up of just attacks within the past few months on healthcare providers. It is happening so rampantly in affecting this industry that even our Department of Treasury has come out and, and made a warning saying, look, we are all in the crosshairs of these cyber criminals. But one other thing that we need to take into account is coming from our own government, they're saying, do not pay the ransom. Under no circumstance should you be paying the ransom because if you do, you may be in violation of laws because oftentimes it's different nation states that are attacking us through ransomware. And if you're paying the ransom, essentially you are paying terrorist organizations. So as, as recent as, as Q4 of last year, our government was saying, look, you need a proper solution in place that prevents you from having even to, to think about if you need to pay the ransom. So 
let's look at, at how this all comes about. What, who are these bad guys? How are they attacking us? And what is really out there on the dark web? What, what is the internet comprised of? So let's look at the anatomy of just that. Where we live on our day-to-day -day personal lives, that's the surface web. Those are your social media sites, your news sites, Amazon, where we do our shopping. The deep web, that's where your, your customer's medical records live. That's where your financial records live. That's where educational records live. That's where there's a security layer in place that you have to get through in order to access these databases. And then there's the dark web, which is the depths of the internet where you can pretty much find anything. You can buy anything. You can trade anything. This is where malware stems from. This is where people are trading their ideas and selling malware, selling your customers healthcare records, selling access to your practice. Now, if you add up the deep web and the dark web, that's 96% of all web traffic, which is astounding when you think of the, the vastness of the internet, 96% is where you and I normally don't even live. So let's look at the cyber threats themselves. Who are the threat groups that are doing this? I, I've mentioned ransomware. The ransomware developers are getting so good at what they're doing and hiding their ransomware. They are simply not going to go away. We have seen an increase in, in insider threats, especially in the past year, past 14 months, as a lot of organizations were tightening their belts, we saw a lot more of insider threats, people intentionally leaving a door open or even selling records, healthcare records on the dark web for financial gain. Anytime that you've got any kind of money like this exchanging hands at the pace that it's exchanging, organized crime wants their cut. And believe me, they are organized. These are not lone wolves in a basement somewhere that are doing this. These are full-fledged organizations with full-fledged departments and getting better and better at what they do, oftentimes run by nation states that, that don't like the U.S. and, and have uh, an agenda to disrupt things. And then the last aspect that we at Data are looking at, uh, the Internet of Things. Think about all the connected devices, especially right now when a lot of staff went to go work from home, clinics may have closed or limited capacity, but you're still accessing data from your home environments. Think about all the other aspects that, that connect to your, all the other uh, items that connect to your home environment. Myself, I've got my cameras, my door locks, my garage door, um, I've got, Alexa pretty much running my entire house, all my lights, my music, you name it. All of these promote uh, different vulnerabilities if you aren't careful. So I get this question asked all the time. Do cyber criminals ever get caught? We know that they're out there and they're, they're out there in masses. Do they get caught? Yes. But in all my research and finding out who, who gets caught, I found one recent article, just one, because the likelihood of getting caught from somebody who's on the complete other side of the world that is has gone through all the security layers their own to make sure they can't get tracked, the likelihood of them getting caught is slim to none. Now, when I sit down and I meet with healthcare professionals and, and uh, the ones running the practice, they tell me this all the time. I've got a great backup solution. My data's already in the cloud. I don't need to worry about it. And that's great if you're keeping your data elsewhere. That's step one of doing this, but it's all about accessing that data if something locks you down. If you're prevented from going to your standard place for getting that data, that's what you need to think about when it comes to this, specifically ransomware. Now, when it comes to the most uh, complex versions of ransomware, what these ransomware strains are doing, they're actually infecting inferior backup solutions. So this ransomware infects a network. Usually it comes about by somebody clicking on the wrong link and it, it sprawls out throughout your network. All of the devices that are connecting to your network, all of your SaaS applications, the, the data, the, the medical records, the electronic records management systems you have in place. And what it does is it, in, it encrypts your actual backup chain. So even if you have a, a backup solution that's just sending your data off site somewhere, depending on what kind of solution you have, you still run the risk of having ransomware deploy within your backup chain. That's what the biggest 
worry is of a lot of, of CISOs, a lot of the, the chief information security officers of large hospitals, that's what they're focusing on right now. How do I make sure that my backup cannot get infected with ransomware? So ask yourself, do you have a backup solution or business continuity? And I'll tell you real easily what, what the difference between the two is. Your backup solution just sends your data offsite and anybody can provide you with a backup solution. I can go with a thumb drive, plug it into your network, back up some data and technically put it in my car and drive offsite. I've got your data offsite. That's not good enough. You need a solution that says, if I do go down, if I do have a natural disaster, if I do have the unfortunate instance of getting ransomware, how do I get that data back? How do I get my medical records back online? How do I get um, my, my medical equipment that is all run through the network? How do I get that all back online as quickly as possible? That is what business continuity is. The easiest way I can describe this would be business continuity is rewinding the hands of time. You have a disaster in the office. Let's just go back to five minutes before that disaster ha happened. If you get ransomware, let's go back to five minutes before that ransomware hit your, your network. Let's pretend it didn't hit. That's what you're able to do with a true business continuity solution. So it's all about protecting your data through the solutions like this, through uh, C3 technologies and data. Now, I mentioned the ability to, for some inferior backup solutions to uh, infect the, the backup itself. And, and don't just take it from, from me, the drinking the, the data Kool-Aid and, and the, the backup business continuity Kool-Aid. Here's a, an article from Redmond. This is a, a, a group of, of um, IT professionals just outside of the Microsoft offices in, in Washington. And they actually use a term called immutable storage. What that means is your data, when it gets off site, your financial records, your medical records, everything that you are saving on your network, if you have a proper backup solution, a proper business continuity solution, you will have immutable storage. Meaning once you have that data set saved, you can't change it under no circumstance, which is what you need when it comes to these financial records. When it comes to these medical records, it's saying, I've got the backup happening. How do I make sure ransomware doesn't infect it? Let's do it through technology that says, even though it's offsite, you can't change anything about it. It's completely immutable. Now, we know that ransomware is running rampant. Uh, it's an epidemic that, that simply we, we will never be able to stop. And this is where we come into play. And, and I don't wanna get too technical at all, but I just wanna walk you through the power of what C3 and Datto have when it comes to your network, your practice, your business, and keeping it online. So on the left-hand side, I'm a, I'm a pictures guy when it comes to technology. If, if I can't see it in a picture, I can't really comprehend it. Left-hand side here is your, your critical business systems. These are your financial records. These are your systems for uh, running the, the, the equipment that you have in the office. These are This is your scheduling system, your, your finance system, everything within your environment. What we do is we take a backup as little as every five minutes and we're storing that on a local appliance. Now, what we can do with our technology is also send it offsite to two data centers, one in Allentown, Pennsylvania, one in Salt Lake City. So at any point in time, there's four copies of, of your data, four copies of your, your records. The, the copy that you have that you normally save, the copy that lives within our backup business continuity solution and then two different data centers that we have. So we have your data in multiple locations, fully encrypted, meaning it cannot be deleted, it cannot be changed, and it's completely safe. Now, what we can do with our technology in the case of a ransomware, we can re virtualize, we can bring that data back in less than six seconds. So we can do that from the, from the on-site device that, that we have in there or from our data center. So just, I'll walk you through this. So let's pretend that, you have a user on the network that accidentally clicked on the wrong link. And just like that, all of your data became encrypted with ransomware. What we do is we just go right back to five minutes before that happened. We instantly virtualize your data, meaning we bring it right back and allow you to get back to work. Exactly how you're used to working. Same operating system, same folders, same, same software packages, all of it right there so that you can continue to take care of your customers, take care of your clients. We can protect 
any size network that's out there, whether you are uh, a small clinic or a, a very large hospital, does not matter. We can protect you the exact same way. Now, I also want to discuss your SaaS data, your software as a service data. Most of you, I'm, I'm willing to bet, are using uh, Office 365, Microsoft 365, or G Suite. And let me tell you that a lot of those solutions, uh, those two solutions specifically, they are just as vulnerable. A lot of the people that I meet with, they say, well, if, if my data is living in Microsoft or I have Google Workplace running my office, are they, aren't they backing it up? They are, but only for a set amount of time. And what we're seeing out there the stats are, are quite staggering. One in three companies are losing your SaaS data. So losing your emails, your calendar, everything went to, to Microsoft Teams, all of the data within there. If you're utilizing SharePoint online, utilizing things for your medical records and, and having all of this access to it, a lot of these avenues of storing this data are being lost through those, these SaaS applications. 47% are just accidental deletions. End users accidentally deleting something. How many times have, have we come across this? I do this all the time myself. I accidentally delete a file. I'll delete a, a calendar appointment. I'll delete a uh, uh, an email, and I won't realize it until it's too late. And then you've got 13% of this data loss is also caused by hackers and viruses themselves. So I, I mentioned the vulnerability of, of the data within Microsoft's uh, uh, Microsoft 365 and, and Google Workplace, we're seeing an increase in the amount of ransomware attacks that are specifically going after Microsoft and Google's data centers and deploying ransomware within that. Now, you have to treat all of that data the same, whether that is your, your medical records, your, your email, your uh, calendaring, your, your Microsoft Teams data, your SharePoint online, because the fact is this, due to laws and compliances, if you experience a data breach, you are required to share that information. Now we start talking about, okay, who do we have to notify? We have to notify everybody. Um, if there's a breach in this, what does this mean for your brand as a clinic? What does this mean for the, those that are concerned about their medical records and those finding their ways to the dark web? And does this keep me HIPAA compliant? Oftentimes, what a lot of doctors that I speak with, what they don't realize is that if you are backing up your SaaS application data, if you're not preventing these malicious deletions that happen, you are not in compliance with HIPAA. So that's, that is something to think about and get some experts in there to, to look at where all of your data lives and ensure that you are compliant. Because I'll also share with you this. I do a lot of these, these presentations with, with our government, with the FBI, Secret Service, uh, the, the, the Homeland Security Departments, even uh, cybersecurity insurance reps. And the thing that they stress is this. If you don't have the proper protocols in place, if, if your security measures aren't patched properly, if your firewall isn't up to date, if you aren't constantly having this testing on your network, both your, your medical records and your SaaS data that is living out there, that there is a loophole in a lot of the cybersecurity insurance claims or, or, or uh, agreements that you have. In, in the contracts that you have with these providers, there are claims buried in there that say, if you aren't protected, if, if you let a patch lapse, if you aren't on, on the front line of keeping everything secure, there's, there's an out that they have where they don't have to pay you the, the damages, the downtime cost to your practice. So these are all things to think about. The, the fact that all data is vulnerable, that the bad guys have you in their crosshairs, that we must remain HIPAA compliant and, and factor in having an expert in there to make sure that they're keeping a watchful eye on your network and that if something bad does happen, let's just rewind the hands of time and, and act as if it didn't happen. That is what you get through Datto, through C3, through our Datto SaaS protection for Microsoft 365 and the Google Suite. Now, real quick, before I wrap up, I've got a few more minutes here before we get to some questions, but I also want you to consider the true cost of downtime because that is the number one thing when it comes to keeping businesses, keeping practices afloat and, and alive if they do experience outages. As that first example I had, that allergy clinic, they were down for eight full days. 
what would that mean for your practice if you were down for eight full days? What kind of downtime costs would, would that mean? So in looking at, at the true cost of this, the ransomware and, and downtime costs are skyrocketing. And the ask of this is, is one thing, but the true cost of what it's like for being down, if we're down for multiple days, this is where we need to start looking at what are the stats really telling us? If, if you consider just two short years ago, two and a half short years ago, the average cost of downtime was under 50 grand. Fast forward to 2020, up 486%. So in, in looking at these numbers, that's where we need to come up with our, our good thresholds for how much data are we willing to lose, if any? How much downtime are we really willing to experience, if any? And in understanding this, what we have, and, and you guys can run through this, this exercise with, with C3 or, or run through on your own, we actually have a, a downtime cost calculator that helps you understand that if your business goes down, if you lose access to your data for even one hour, what does that mean for you? And built within this, are, are it's just 10 easy questions. It's about uh, your thresholds for uh, your backup sli- sli- uh, situation right now. How far back in time are you going if you need to restore? How long can you can your network be down? A matter of minutes, I'm, I'm guessing in, in your case. How much data do you have in your network? How large are, are the file systems that you have in place of all the healthcare records that you're saving? And then lastly, y- your business itself. What kind of what kind of overhead costs are we talking about when it comes to every hour that's down? These are some real quick and easy questions. You may know the answers to as far as overhead costs, the average salary of your employees from uh, the, the least expensive employee on up to the, the most expensive one in the office and factoring in what that means for downtime if suddenly everything comes to a halt. In doing this, then, you're able to compare your current backup solution to the best in breed, the best in class, business continuity solutions that are out there, and then make that educated business decision of, do I want to continue with that standard backup practice that I had of yesterday, or do I want to invest in something that's going to keep my network, keep my practice open if and when anything bad happens to my network? For all of this information, if you want a needs assessment, uh, a downtime cost calculator, I've got some uh, the email address and phone number here for the fine folks at C3 Tech. Rest assured, they are the experts in this area as far as building, designing, maintaining these beautiful networks, using the, the business con- continuity solutions of Datto, but more importantly, keeping the bad guys out, keeping security at, at the top of mind when it comes to taking care of your, your networks and your customers. So shoot them an email if you would like more information, rsvp at c3tech.com, and their phone number is 714-689-1700. Ultimately, we want you to stay protected. That is my goal in what I do at Datto. It starts with your people, getting them to understand the risks that are out there, what to click on and what not to click on, and get that end user training that's out there for everybody within the organization, that's your first level of keeping the bad guys out. Your second is having the processes behind it. If something happens, you have to have a process in place to say, this bad thing happened, I know exactly what my next step is. I know who I'm calling, I know how quickly I'll be able to get back up and running, and I'll know how to prevent the ransomware from even taking place in the first place through the technology. This is where we need the experts in there. You guys are all experts at, at taking care of us. So let the experts at taking care of a network go in there and, and make sure that, that your network is safe, secure, and has all the features of getting you back up and running if anything ever happens. So with that, I'd like to bring up uh, Davis back on the line here to uh, tell us about the, the webinar giveaway today, and, and then we can get to some Q&A we have here for you guys. Yeah, thank you so much, Eric. Um, hopefully you guys you know, had a great presentation. Um, thank you all for heading in the right direction. Uh, first and foremost, by attending this uh, presentation, whether you need data backup, SaaS protection, which is for your G Suite or your Office 365, we're here to help. And um, you know, a couple of promotions today. The first one is for those who attended today's webinar, please feel free to email rsvp at c3tech.com. Um, please have the hashtag Taylor Tuesday with your name, number, and email. Um, we'll have this open for 48 hours and we'll hand out Amazon gift cards. For the next promotion, um, since we're talking about business continuity and SaaS protection, uh, for those that are attending today's webinar, uh, we're offering free hardware 
um, up to $3,000. And it's going to de um, depend on when we do a network assessment. And that's us getting into your network, getting to see what's going on and how much data you have and how much we can protect you. Um, again, the hardware is free. And then if you're, you guys are using Office 365 or you're using G Suite, we will offer a 30-day free trial of our spam um, ransomware detection. And again, um, hashtag Taylor Tuesday to RSVP at seethroughtech.com. Um, and then lastly, I just want to thank again for, for everyone for your time. Um, C2 Tech, we're here to help. Whether you need data backup, SaaS protection, um, or you need services like voice over IP, copiers, printers, IT services, uh, reach us to the contact below, RSVP at C3 Tech, or give us a call, 714-689-1700. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you, guys. And now that everyone can clean their pants and then think about some questions <laughs> about uh, what you might have, you know, it's it's interesting. I said, I think, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong. You said it was every 13 seconds we every were hit. Is that every 13 so seconds a business is, and that's just in the U.S. Every 13 seconds a business in the U.S. is hit with ransomware. That is how prevalent it's out there. It's insane. It, that is that is rather remarkable and scary. And you think about the fact that we put so many things out feeling safe with just regular daily email, right? And it's and you know we're relying on Norton or Acast or you know whoever named the company, right? That's out there doing that kind of protection. That it that it's reliable. It's amazing. You know, it's interesting. And Ashley, I know you have some questions that have come in through too. One thing I just wanted to throw this out there too is that a question was, is there a hard copy of this info available? So I guess, could you explain hard copy versus is soft copy a term <laughs> or is it really just in the cloud? Or, you know, sometimes doctors are paper animals. Um, sure. So yeah. what's the difference between say a hard copy, a soft copy, a cloud or whatever? We we believe in, and we, we take a, a stance of a hybrid based backup. And in, in our terms, a hybrid meaning we're keeping multiple copies of your data on multiple in multiple locations in different formats of it. Now, for you guys that, that have these medical records, you have to have the, the paper records with it. So, yes, there, there is a the, the hard copy of the data being the actual paper record, the soft copy of that being the actual digital information that 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 piece of paper holds. So transferring that into uh, uh, the digital information that the healthcare records that we have and just making sure we, we've got copies of that. Yes, we work with a lot of, of offices that, that do have their, their big filing cabinets, keeping all the, the medical records on, on paper as well as, as having the electronic version of it and, and making sure that, that that data is encrypted, stored, safe in transit and safe at, at, at rest when it is stored. It's um, amazing. It's amazing, uh, Eric. I'm sorry, Davis, go ahead and finish, please. Uh, we also have a copy of the presentation. Um, we also have document uh, documentation of our brochures of the business continuity and our SaaS protection that we can send out as well. And, um, you know, following up on what Eric said and with data that you're losing, um, even if it's a file that you have, because we can go back in time, if you have a version that's five o'clock versus 4.30, we're able to virtualize that and bring it back to the 4.30 format. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, isn't it, that the, in the days when I started practice, when we used paper charts, that we were worried about fire, and that was like nothing. <laughs> it yeah. was like that truly was not even a blue moon sort of an occurrence. Obviously, we were always worried about it, but that compared to thir every 13 seconds that someone's trying to hack into your system, that's just scary. Ash, I think you had some questions that came in as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the next question is, what should be my concern if my EMR is a cloud service, large national provider, they back up without me even knowing, what should I be asking them? I, there's a couple of things that jump out to me right away is, is how are they backing it up? There's a number of different um, technical abilities within the backup. What I would first be asking them is my backup encrypted. And if that data is moving anywhere in between different data centers, sometimes what we've seen is different uh, data is bouncing around all different data centers. Is it also encrypted when it's in transit? That, that's, that's, that's the first two questions I would ask. Is it encrypted? And then is it encrypted while it's in transit? And 
how exactly are you backing this up and where exactly is my data living? Um, I think those are, are four things that, that they, they will be able to tell you instantly. The, the second set of this, I would be asking about those data centers themselves because at, at Data, we're constantly giving reporting to, to law office or uh, healthcare practices, to financial industries saying, we know that you have to adhere to, to HIPAA, HIPAA rules and regula regulations. Here is all of the compliance reports you need to prove that, yes, my data is being HIPAA compliant with, with everything that we have. That's an interesting point you bring up, too. And I know some people have asked about some of our malpractice carriers provide coverage. So for those of you putting on an old they used to wear as a pike that provides $50,000 of protection in every policy automatically, which is nice. Now, compared to that $1.75 million award, that's not much. Right. But it, interesting is that for those of you who have an interest in that, and I'm not just promoting PICA here, but even asking any of your carriers, you know, they should be offering you some kind of cyber coverage. And I think PICA gives up to a million dollars of coverage with for six, seven hundred dollars a year. But the point is, you have to also have um, HIPAA protection and an IT security in place already for them to underwrite you in that direct. And so exactly. I think you know, Eric and, and Davis's point is that you know, you've got to have the systems in place. And if you and just like with audits with Medicare or anything else, if you don't have your systems in place and you get hosed, that's when you're in trouble. And then it's then it's harder to go backwards and go, what am I going to do now? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, another question is, where are your data centers? Um, yeah, so we, we intentionally um, in the US, we have two uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. And, uh, and our data center isn't a shared data center with, with anybody else. It, it's, it's our data center specifically just doing the job of our business continuity solution. Nobody else is in there, um, which further goes to the compliance uh, uh, and rules and regulations that, that we adhere to. Our secondary data center is the exact same. It's our data center. Nobody else has any data in there other than the, the customers we're protecting. And uh, that one's in Salt Lake City. Okay. And I know you spoke about it um, a little bit in the beginning, but this is, you said, HIPAA compliant. Correct. Yeah. Um, there's there's different HIPAA compliant. Yes. And when it comes to making sure that your practice is HIPAA compliant, that's when we start needing need to look at all of your data. But the, the data that lives within the data solutions, within the C3 solutions that, that they provide through data, um, yes, we are HIPAA compliant. Um, what kind of encryption is done on the backup? So it's it's 256, the industry standard, 256 uh, bit encryption. Um, but we also adhere to the next level up of, of not encrypting the data, but even accessing that data, which I'm sure a lot of you have built into your practice too. And, and one of the other safety measures, multi-factor authentication. So mm -hmm. even for C3's team, in order to even access the data and and create the, the the path to the data centers and the backup solution in the first place, we have a second layer of security outside of, of encrypting the data, but multi-factor authentication that further prevents any unwarranted access. So I have a question along that line, and, and I'm not even pretending to be an IT person here, but this HLA-7, which is the platform that these like EMRs communicate with ultrasound machines, x-ray machines, right? And, and so we're getting data sent from one unit in our into our EMR. Mm -hmm. And so does C3 help cover that entire platform? Is there, are there segments that it covers or how does that work? So we cover the management of the, the software. We'll act as your vendor liaison. Um, we would help, we will hope that the software that you have has a subscription license. And we will work together to make sure that, you know, one, that data is being backed up and then it goes into our data solution to be backed up. Excellent. Yeah, I brought that up because I know that so many, you know, with all of us using EMRs now, we're trying to find ways to have our data be transferred from machine to machine to machine. So you're not having, you know, intermittent flows or changes in flow. And so, for example, we use Athena at Upperline. And, and one of the things that we really want to make sure that we have is this connection between each of the the testing end modalities that one may have in an office and have mm -hmm. that transferred into Athena automatically. And so between the PAC systems for x-rays and the, and et cetera, that's, that was the reason for the 
because I think we all, we have so many ancillary services now that we're offering. And I think to your point, they're all hackable. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it's just making sure that that's protected as, you know, one like it is, which is great. Thank you. Um, is there any kind of testing performed to check to check the integrity of the backup? Ooh, very good question. Whoever asked that. Um, yes, I didn't want to get too much into the, the technical weeds of, of what we do, but built into our, our technology is uh, there's a couple of things that we're doing. We are scanning every single backup for a footprint of ransomware. So as a, a, another layer of, of security saying, because we're able to look at two different points in time from five minutes to five minutes and say, okay, here's what the, the data looked like five minutes ago. This last backup, it looks different. There could be a footprint of ransomware. That's the first test that we're doing, scanning every single five minute backup to see if there's a footprint of ransomware. The second test that we do every single night, the technology does it for you. We are we are virtualizing. We are, are every single device that we're backing up we're, we're spinning up in our cloud, in our data center, and getting to the login screen of it so that we know that if you need to virtualize a server, if you need to bring a server or, or bring a workstation back, if, if you lose a laptop, we're able to, to test it every single night and make sure that we're able to just pull that, that data right back down at a moment's notice and, and get you right back online. So we're, we're testing for ransomware on every single backup, and then every single night, we are doing a full backup test on every single device that we're backing up. It's all built right into the technology. Yeah, to elaborate on that as well, um, C3 as an IT service provider, um, we can provide services nationwide. These data appliances, they create tickets for our IT staff. So if a backup doesn't work, right? If it's that five minute at midnight where it failed, we get a ticket generated right away and we go in and we test it and we look what's going on. Um, to simplify what Eric said as well, um, what's, what virtualizing means is it's taking a screenshot of your desktop, right? You have that top right folder, you have three icons on the left. It takes that exact instance and it creates a replicated copy of it. If you never need to go back, you have that quote unquote screenshot of your desktop or your server. The way, the way, if I could, yeah, and I'll just elaborate on this. We're backing up everything, your, your, your software, your files, your folders, even your desktop background. So that if we do need to, to, to bring it right back down to you, if we, we need you to access this, it's exactly how you're used to working. All of your shortcuts, all of the kids' pictures, whatever you have on there, it's all being backed up. Um, what security systems are in place for accessing the data? That is that that ties in line with the multi-factor authentication. Um, we have, aside from multi-factor authentication, just accessing, and that that's for C3 being the the providers of this to you. They have to jump through a, 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 a proving that they're them. So it's it's getting a message as as you guys may be used to with some of the technologies you're utilizing, using your phone to say yes, that's me, and as you're logging in, or a key fob that, that you have to plug in, or a keystroke that that you make on an outside device. We have all of that built into it. Um, what we are also doing is, as far as a security standpoint is we're constantly testing our own data centers and uh, we have a, a team of white hack hackers on our side that is going in and, and constantly trying to break our system and break into our system. And, and they are, as of now, very unsuccessful in doing that, but any kind of bugs that, that they may come about or anything that, that would even hint at leaving any kind of vulnerability they're resolving right there. So uh, there's a lot of systems in place and measures to make sure that it is as rock solid and secure as it can possibly get through technology. So this is this is an interesting question that just came up and I was actually thinking about cell phones. Um, you know, I know that cell phones are much more public than people realize. Oh yeah. Um, so this question was, what about my staff that works remotely? Can computers be backed up if they're working from home? Yes, and that that has exploded in the past 12, 14 months. And yes, there are technologies through data, through C3, as far as treating those home devices and even mobile devices exactly as if they're on the network. One thing I, I do want to stress for, for, for you, and, and if you do have workers that are working remote, 
just make sure that they're even using the, the right type of hardware. Because oftentimes what we're finding when, when we walk into a practice and they say, yes, something happened to the network and it was a home user, chances are they were using a, a shared laptop, a shared desktop with that, that happened to have the, the kids' video games on it, the kids' schools, schooling work on there, that somebody else at, at the home was using it for their work. Suddenly you've got different networks that, that are interacting and, and leaving pos possible vulnerabilities uh, yes, there are solutions to back those up, to treat them exactly as if, if they're on the network. There's uh, ways to access that data through VPN, through remote desktops, through uh, secured methods of, of pointing back to the office. But yes, I would treat every single device that's connecting to your network, whether that's a laptop from a home user, an iPad, um, my phone. I mean, I do, I do a lot of work from my phone, especially because I'm, I'm usually on the road. And the way data is built, we, we, we built it in a way that us mobile mobile people and, and, and road warriors, we have access to just about everything. There are absolutely security measures in place that you, you need to take a look at to make sure that, that you and, and your data and your medical records are safe. Yeah, um, reach out to C3 for a network assessment. We'll look at your environment. We'll look at your home environment, uh, see how things are being VPN into the environment. Um, if you're using mobile phones, obviously you're using Outlook or G Suite. Um, there's the SaaS protection that backs up the email so that you can follow any platform you want from an uh, iPad to your phone to your desktop, know that it will be protected. And then lastly, um, if you are working from home, we do ask that you know you have Sentinel one which is one of the endpoint protection softwares that we provide um, to protect the hardware itself. What was that called again, David, that, or Davis, that home software? It's called Sentinel one Okay. So what operating systems does this work with? Uh, we back up any kind of Windows operating system. Um, the list of Linux operating systems, which actually runs a lot of the, the healthcare equipment that we're seeing out there in the field. And I couldn't even tell you, it's hundreds of different versions of Linux. Um, and some of you may even have uh, Mac, um, micro, or, uh, Mac uh, laptops or, or desktops we back up all three, so Linux, Mac, and, and Windows. Okay, and then another question is, how do I know if I have a business continuity solution versus a backup solution? Uh, good, good question. I, I would, first I would, I would get the, the pros in there to, to look for you and they'll be able to, to dictate exactly what you have. Um, the, the biggest difference is, in, and ask your current provider, if it's not C3, ask your current provider, if you go down, how fast can I get back up and running? And just pose that question to them. Let's just say I, I ran through an exercise, but I just got ransomware. My backup solution that you offer me, what is it? How fast can I get back up and running? And they'll be able to tell you right off the bat whether you have true full-blown business <coughs> continuity. And they say a matter of a minute, I'll have you back online. Or if they say, well, we need to do some digging, we need to do this, we need to do that, that's when you know you have a backup solution. The, the clear cut difference is somebody who's providing you business continuity will say, yeah, you've got business continuity, I'll get you back up and running in about a minute. So we're also, gonna, go ahead, David, sorry. I'll also ask what type of backup is being repaired, right? Is, are you getting your files back? Are you getting your programs back? Do they have to rebuild the whole server to get you back? A lot of these questions will be asked, you know, whether it's by us or what your current IT provider. And what Datto does well is, you know, selling the, the backup solution is one thing, but having a proof of concept behind it where you can print out a document to share to your staff, to management, that it, it can be done and it'll be done in this amount of time, I think is very powerful. So let me ask you a question, guys. There's a lot of people now, obviously G Suite is like huge. You know, people, AOL is old people stuff. Ashley, you probably use AOL. Uh, <laughs> AOL is old people stuff. Um, G Suite's huge. Obviously, yeah. Outlook is huge. Is there one of those that's better than the other from a security perspective, or am I talking like apples and oranges here? Um, no, I mean, they both have security measures in place, and they both have have – uh, like Sentinel One and, and the endpoint management to make sure that these devices that are accessing this data are secure. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you that one is is better than another. It, it's all personal preference. I can tell you at Datto we use both. 
uh, I'm, I'm, we leave it up to our, uh, the different departments and, and what we're doing in regards to data. Uh, we use, we use Google, but other aspects, they're full blown, uh, Microsoft shops. So, um, it, it all depends on personal preference and, and just, uh, Davis, I, I think you can hop in here and just saying, look, if you're, if you're looking between the two, just make sure you've got the, the right security solutions in place that, that'll keep you protected. Right. At the end of the day, it's what you're comfortable with and what is the holistic platform, right? Microsoft built Teams, they built, you know, the web conference, the sharing, the email, all under one house, one, under one button. Um, G Suite does it as well, it's limited features. Um, they, they're both good in terms of spam filtering, but what they don't have is the AI base that Datto provides. So the emails looking, scanning through your links, um, looking at activities that are abnormal. Um, that's what it doesn't provide and that's where we can jump in and help. Excellent. All right. I think that's all the questions that I have. Mike, did you have any more? No, no. I think this was, this was great, Eric and Davis. I think it was, we got done a little bit early. You, you really did cook through the slides, Eric. That was pretty good. I'm <laughs> I've done it once or twice. <laughs> now, see, good thing if I, if I was here, it would be, it'd be 10 after before we heat. No, just kidding. It's uh, it, it, this was, this was great. I think it's, um, very enlightening. I think it's something that we all think, but again, it's just like like Medicare audits or getting cancer. Or whatever. Well, that happens to the other guy. That happens to the other guy. You know, all it takes is one of those breaches and your career and your practice could just be destroyed. And all it takes is one email that you clicked accidentally thinking it was an Amazon link that you got a gift card for $25 or it could be, you know, an Airbnb 25% off. Do you guys get you guys get into the training at all of things like that, Davis? Like you know, I've I've taken different core emails and how to look for phishing emails, and you sort of get a pretty good feel right after you've seen a bunch of crap. <laughs> what <clears throat> what's good and what's bad? You know, it's in. in do you guys do any kind of instruction that way for staffs or anything like that? So uh, we do cybersecurity training. Um, we also do phishing campaigns. So with uh, COVID being such a hot topic last year, um, we were able to tailor some of the emails that we sent out. It could be, you know, fresh news from um, CNN about COVID-19 vaccine. So clients will get the email, they have to fill in their information and might even ask for their, um, you know, Kaiser ID. But yeah. once it's then it's saying, hey, you, you almost fell for a real thing. This is what you can do to prevent it. And had you given that information, it goes into dark web, and that's where they sell your information, and that's where they use that to log into your 365 to hack your Outlook. So uh, we provide a lot of modules. Um, we can customize it for the medical environment, and we set up, you know, customized phishing campaigns. Excellent. Well, I wanted to, I want to thank both all of you, uh, Ashley, for your assistance tonight, and uh, Eric for incredible information. Um, Greetings sent out to the CEO, Tony, who I know is watching today, too, with Dr. DeSant. That was a pleasure. Um, guys, this was great. Uh, I, I would encourage all of you to um, take a serious look at this. You know, you hear me and I, Ira and I talking all the time about coding and compliance and, and internal practice audits and documentation. This is just another example of an audit that's so critical for your offices to do that I think that most are very lazy about. We rely upon the rest of the world to protect us from these outside sources. And based on the fact that every 13 seconds someone's trying to to uh, reach inside your your house is pretty pretty distressing. <laughs> yeah. um, but we want to thank you again. Um, we will be back in a couple of weeks again for our next Taylor Tuesday, and uh, we're going to be speaking with um, Mr. John Lentz from Ultrasound System or about ultrasound system optimization uh, from 10 vision ultrasound um, of course i want to encourage you all to please go to to uh, taylormedical.com if you haven't sent in your data send in your data and have uh, ashley carla and siobhan take a look and give you a, a good review um, but to uh, close out for the evening at once again thank you eric davis uh, thank you mr sanchez uh, we appreciate all of you and, you know, I, most of you may not know, but Dato is probably the largest in the world that does what they're doing. And so uh, that, that's a, that speaks for something. It's sort of, they're the Google of cybersecurity. Hey, who knows? Maybe you'll actually, guys, you'll actually be a verb and a noun someday too. 
That would be a <laughs> cool. goal. That would be very so, cool. Anyway, but we thank all of you, and uh, everyone have a pleasant couple of weeks, and we'll see you again next time on Taylor Tuesday. Thanks. Thank you, guys, thank you and thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ash. See you. Bye.